So, there's always something to be done when you're into curls. In my particular case today, I've stumbled across a very Australian vehicle. It's a 1998 Ford XH Ute that has basically been abandoned. It needs a little bit of love. So that's what I'm going to do. For those unfamiliar, the Ford Ute has a rich history in Australia. It all began when an Australian farmer wrote to Ford Australia, asking for a vehicle that could go to church on a Sunday and haul pigs to market on Mondays. This simple request birthed an Australian legend. And unlike American pickups, these Utes drove like cars while still packing a practical punch in the tray. They were the best of both worlds. When you fast forward to 1967, the Ford Ute became part of the Ford Falcon family. A true Aussie classic. The Ford Falcon Ute kept rolling off the assembly line in one form or another until 2016, marking 82 years of Ford Ute production history, with 50 years under the Falcon banner. Now my Ute, the XH model, rolled off the line in 1996 at Ford Broadmeadows, Victoria. That plant was the cradle for many iconic Aussie Fords. But it's a bittersweet tale as the plant was closed in 2016, signifying a shift in the global auto industry. The XH Ute, though, was a hit. By 99, when mine was born, Ford had crafted over 29,500 of these workhorses, and they were considered the embodiment of versatility and durability, a true Australian legend. From worksite to weekend adventures, the XH Ute was a quintessential part of many Australian families. So now, let's dive into the TV ad for it, from 1999. Taking us back to an era of Australian motoring advertising history. Introducing a new ute. From Ford. It's the new Ford Longreach. With over 60 major improvements, the Longreach range includes new styling, anti-lock brakes, driver's airbag and a new interior. Stay. <laughs> And it still carries more weight than any other ute in its class. The new Ford Longreach. Give it heaps. Even in the 90s, Australian ads were very 90s, huh? So, first things first, I have to start with a good wash. I don't really like working on super grimy cars, and you can really watch the goo come off here. As I'm going over, I'm keeping a keen eye out for any hidden rust. Sneaky rust spots can eventually wreak havoc. So, I'm just making sure to check every nook and cranny. I did manage to find surface rust, uh, the brown bits you can see here and there. But all in all, it isn't too bad. But maybe a little rust inhibitor and paint will do wonders. She does have her fair share of dents and dings from years of hard work. I suppose that's just character, but if you're a stickler for perfection, I could get those fixed. A bit of panel beading and a fresh coat of paint could be in her future. And then there's the ute bed itself. These were made to haul, and she's done her fair share of that. A few scratches and scrapes are expected, but it's always a good idea to make sure there's no hidden surprises like more rust or structural issues. Which leads us to the beating heart of this thing. A 4 litre straight 6, developed by Ford with origins in America originally. It's a 4 litre crossflow straight 6, which you don't see much of anymore, apart from in BMWs, uh, that made, when it was new, about 200 horsepower fuel injected uh, from 1999-ish. And they were renowned for deciding to blow head gaskets and do all other kinds of strange stuff. But it seems like this one is a pretty good runner, although it needs a good clean. I imagine that of those 200 horsepower, some of the horses may have left the gate and uh, potentially decided to make their way to other paddocks. But this one's not too bad. This is what it looks like right now. Let's hit it with a pressure washer and see what it looks like. So after all that, this is what we're looking at. 
blown all the dust off. Some of the details are actually quite excellent. The plastic seems to be pretty well looked after. It's a bit of grease and grime that will need a heavy duty degreaser put on it and a bit of a scrub in order to look okay. There is some amount of surface rust that is notable here along with the firewall there a little bit, but nothing that's really concerning, which is nice. So all in all, I think, looking at this thing, we can save this. There's no rust underneath the car. I can't really video that because the space is a little bit too tight, uh, at least here. It looks pretty good. I think with a little bit of effort and time, and some elbow grease, we can get this thing back on the road. I think we need to come up with a name for it. I'm starting to become attached. We'll figure something out. That's step one. Step two, need to figure out why it's not getting any fuel. At the moment, the best guess is that it's the fuel pump. So thankfully, if we come back here, the fuel pump is just there, underneath that cover. So all we need to do is pull that off, pull the fuel pump out, see what's happening. Now, one of the things that is good to see is that the fuel tank itself is quite clean and the hoses look new. So that indicates to me that someone has replaced this in the, in the past. So it might, if I'm lucky, just be a fuse or a relay. If I can replace the fuse or the relay, there's no reason why the car couldn't be running now. Let's find out. A quick trip to the parts store later, I discovered that, no, I could not get this done today. In fact, it would take about 12 days for a new fuel pump to arrive, even though it was typically something they kept on the shelf. So I took that as an opportunity to go to a nearby secondhand store that sold a lot of old oddities and a surprising number of old car parts, including stereos, but more importantly, intake manifolds for old Holden straight sixes. Yes, I know we're working on a Ford, but I have no real brand loyalty when it comes to cars, and I'll work on anything that I find interesting. So with that, I am going to leave this project for a couple of weeks while I wait for this stuff to show up, and I'll be back again soon to maybe show what happens once we finally get this thing back on the road. Hello, tiny friend. I'd rather you weren't here. I'll have to figure out a way to evict you. <laughs>